I am a featured artist here at the Sedona Art Center for November and December. I have been working on these beautiful shawls and works of art since Vince and Valerie sent me a notice in January asking me if I would like to participate. So this is the result of working on my knitting, which I always have with me, and COVID, so I didn't have to leave the house and go crazy. Please come down and see it. Bye. Hello, Sedona. This is Patty Barker, and I'm so honored and humbled to be one of the artists of the month for November and December. So as a result, I've sent along a little box of goodies um, some scarves, some shawls, little ponchos, um, all hand dyed and Nuno felted by me. Oh, and there's even a coat. So make sure you try them on. That's the fun of it all. Anyway, I hope you have a really great event. I wish I could be there in person, but this is the next best thing. Anyway, good luck and take care. Hi, my name is uh, Lynn Michael. My husband and I make this Naked Raccoon Pottery. Um, we started doing it about 15 or 20 years ago. My husband learned to throw working with Will Jacobson, who invented this process when he lived here in Sedona about 30 years ago now. Um, the background colors are actually colored slips that I applied while the clay is still wet. After it's dried and bisque fired, we apply two lasers of glaze and then fire the piece. And this is what comes off. And that's all over the ceramic surface. People have asked me how I get the, the designs on the pottery. And I do that myself. I do all of that. I practice. I do all the images in watercolor first. And then I do the, the little ceramic toppers for the lid too. I started doing this about 15 years ago. I learned to throw, I learned to do the ceramic sculpture. And so I started when I was about 50. So I would encourage people to take classes here. <clears throat> it's a good place to learn. I really am inspired by, by old pottery. These images are membranes. These are Santa Domingo. I went up to the Museum of Northern Arizona with a sketchbook, and made a lot of drawings, and I worked from those. I also really like working from arts and crafts pottery designs from the early 1900s, and that's what these are. It's the Tiffany type design and I've just adapted it to Sedona. Anyway, I love making these, and I hope that you will stop by the gallery or shop online, and uh, really appreciate your attention. Thank you. Hello, I'm Janet Weaver, and I'm an oil painter. These happen to be my paintings that are around me. Uh, I am known for lots of color, lots of detail, High contrast. I'm a self-taught artist. Um, I did discover the old masters and they actually taught me how to paint. And I paint along their style today. Uh, I like uh, anything that's beautiful. I don't limit myself to any subjects. 
I can paint anything I think is pretty. I have to see it, and if I like it, I paint it. Um, I've been painting for 60 years. And you figure out the, you, you try to figure out the, the arithmetic there. And I, I just, um, it's always been a passion for me, and and I just can't quit doing it. I, even if I uh, can't sell one thing, I can't, if I, as long as I can raise my arm, I'm gonna paint. And I hope that you enjoy them, and I hope you enjoy the Sedona Art Center uh, featured artists for the for November and December. One way to remember me is colorful and bold. That's what I like to paint. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Leahy. I'm a clay artist and a painter here in Sedona. I've been a gallery artist here at SAC for probably 22 years. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about my work. I work primarily in clay that has mica in it, that sparkle. And I like to tell stories on clay surfaces as well as painting in almost the same colors as my glazes. Um, I like animal imagery. I especially am attracted to ravens. You can see these three pieces. I like horses. And this one up here is kind of patterned after Hopi traditions, the rain dance. And the migration symbol I use over and over again in all my work. Uh, if you like red, orange, bright colors, I'm your gal. So that's what I would like to say and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Karen Puckett and I would like to introduce you to uh, my fuse glass work here at the Sedona Art Center. I started doing this uh, fusing in 1990 after making some big stained glass windows. Um, the whole point is color through light, light through color. So when I was a child, I used to go to Forest Lawn and look at those giant stained glass windows and think, that's what I wanna do, colored glass when I grow up. So here we are all these years later, and people often ask me, what, what is dichroic glass? Well, I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Sandberg who created uh, dichroic glass, and this is dichroic glass, and he's the one who worked for NASA to actually create dichroic. Now it should be trichroic because you've got reflective, transmitted light, and off-axis colors. Now watch how this changes when I put this color behind it. So the beauty of dichroic glass is there's the transparency, there's the light, there's the color coming through. So it's pretty magical stuff. Um, and so Mr. Sandberg's still in the business. He stopped working for NASA and created this wonderful glass. A um, lot of suppliers now, but still we think Mr. Sandberg is the best. So sometimes it's on black and you say, well, why would you put it if, if you want the light to come through it? Because it's all reflective. Sometimes a black background gives you obviously a lot more reflection. purple and when you hold it up to the light it transmits yellow so it's the different colors on the spectrum on the color wheel yellow purple silver blue this one's a really cool piece so you've got rainbow another one of mr sandberg's but when you put a different color underneath it you're going to get different reflections, different hues, different colors. That's, that's basically the magic of the glass. So people ask me, they go, well, how do you make this? Basically, it starts out like a stained glass window. Cut, grind, and put together. So for example, this piece here, it's a base glass, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10 pieces of glass over a base glass. So that's 11 pieces of glass on there. Glass is happiest and it's most stable when it's a quarter of an inch thick and rounded. I've learned the hard way. No more little tiny thin pieces that are subject to breakage. So when you see most of my work, you say, wow, it's mostly rounded, no sharp edges because you're going to wear it, and uh, soft and easy to wear. 
Um, so I also use um, fine metals. You'll see some of these are in silver. And um, only really good findings made in America with no nickel, so there's no irritation. So people don't have to be worried about that. Alrighty, any questions? If there's questions, come visit, visit us at the Art Center, okay? Thank you.